This week on a very special episode of Waxing the Porpoise, G-Baby, the usual suspect Steve, and honorary third host Chris from Channel 83 gather to look back at our first year in podcasting. 52 weeks up, 52 episodes down. Join us as we once again bust out the good tarp and shout out our listeners, friends of the show, and other podcasts that have supported us. Unanimously agree, stuffed crust pizza is the only way to fly, and listen back to some of our favorite moments this past year. Thank you to all who've listened and may have enjoyed what we're laying down. Quick, fuck, Mary kill. G-Baby, Steve, or Chris. Baseball. Let's wax this porpoise anniversary. Lion face. Ah, lemon face. Ooh. All right. Uh, welcome back to Waxing the Porpoise. Uh, we're here on kind of a, a special episode, uh, special for us. Uh, this is our 52nd episode, uh, which marks our one year anniversary, uh, releasing an episode uh, once a week for 52 weeks. So, as I alluded to on the last podcast, no, I'm not going to kill myself or I'm not, <laughs> we're not disbanding the podcast, but you know, shit happens. If we don't make it to a hundred, which is like my next kind of would be cool to achieve goal. I thought it'd be cool just to look back at a year doing this every week has been a lot of fun. We've had some really good guests, made a lot of friends along the way that have been super cool. So me and Steve wanted to kind of shout those people out too and that have supported the show and we're gonna we're gonna have a few laughs i got a couple uh some funny tidbits that i've i've pulled from the last year that we can chuckle to and maybe go over you know just a couple fun factoids about the show and like maybe where we're going looking at into the future um this evening you got myself jim g baby bg that mean a baby gangster and of course, as always, we have the usual suspect, Steve. Sean, you're my same height. That is neat. <laughs> and joining us, we have special guest and returning champion, Chris from Channel 83, to share in uh, our gloating, I suppose. Baseball. How's it going, man? Oh, good. Glad to be here. Sweet. Yeah, thanks for joining us. I figured you're pretty much an honorary member. You've been on the most episodes, like nine or ten or something like this at, at this point. But uh, yeah, I thought it'd just be fun if you weren't doing anything to hop on and uh, we'll see where we go. And probably number one fan. Nice. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, you always commented on the shows and stuff. That was cool, like having an insight when you came on. So yeah, definitely appreciate you listening. And that, to me, also, like, no bullshit all bullshit aside like uh it means a lot for me too because i was a big fan of of your show channel 83 you know when you had that going and i thought you did a really good job like professional the way you produce the show the content that you put out and you were still and you still able to to slip in your your kind of humor uh that's very on brand and and uh, yeah it was just a really good show so that i i appreciate well, thank that, you man. anytime so getting into uh, some shout outs, I guess uh, we, we cut it in half here because it, that's quite the list. So I, I figure I'll, I'll kick us off here. First at the top of my list is for sure I wanted to give a shout out to the Straight Chilling crew, uh, Bob, Randy, and Soju. Uh, I've been a longtime listener of theirs and I actually, you know, part of the reason of wanting to get into podcasting along with uh, listening to Chris's show channel 83 was following these guys for years. And they kind of had a, they started a slack in like 2018, which is similar to a discord people are familiar with now. Uh, and it brought to, I think there's like a hundred people in it now. And it kind of brought a bunch of people together, like-minded fans of the show. And it kind of like a lot of the, the people that I've made friends with, over the past three, four years, uh, we've gone on their shows and they've started their own podcast. So they're definitely integral. And each one of those guys has been on the show this year, which was super awesome. Again, like, like having you on Chris is kind of coming full circle, like listening and then being able to get involved in that kind of community is, is has been super cool. And then you're, you're right there. I mean, I've, I've already kind of sung your praises, but ha having you on and just like, uh, the vibe of each show is is super fun, and I always look forward to you uh, 
joining us and rapping about the stuff that we love. Oh, so yeah. Thank you again. Steve, I'm sure I, I don't want to speak for you. I know he you got something to say, I'm sure. Yeah. Chris, you're cool. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, we we love having you on. I personally, every time I, I hear you're coming on, I'm like, fuck yeah. It'll be, it'll be awesome. No matter what, no matter how shitty your movie recommendation is or whatever we're watching uh, on that particular week. Thank you. Word. <laughs> Moving down the list, uh, I also wanted to shout out uh Tyler Nightmare and his Motley crew at Punks at the Cinema. Check those guys out. Uh, I know he listens to the show, and he, he's he's uh, he's a super cool dude. So check them out, Punks at the Cinema, who I met through Straight Chilling. Uh, also, the Bean Dub podcast, uh, Bean Mang, Laura, and Bruce Circumference. Uh, they got an awesome show, too. Check them out. Um, Shaggy and Jose over at Cinema Villains. Fucking kick ass. Uh, my little slice of hell, uh, dude on Instagram, who's just like super cool and just like promotes our shit all the time, like stories, reels, just a really cool dude. And, uh, a lot of similar kind of movie tastes, uh, appreciate you. Uh, and then also, uh, new friends, uh, Anna and Hannah at the cinema slab podcast, who I also met through straight chilling. They have, uh, their own podcast that I just joined. We went over the last uh, episode eight and nine of the last of us um, just kind of spur of the moment thing. Uh, they're super cool. They have an awesome show. And Anna has her own uh, kind of horror movie themed, like uh, candle making business. That's super rad. She does like candles, wax, milk, air freshener. Uh, I think, what is it? Anna's house of wax. Google it. Yes. Awesome shit. Um, Steve, you want to take it away? Uh, yeah. Just a couple more podcast pals our uh our friends hydroberg jacqueline and john over at cut above uh it's a fun show i think i i went through their catalog of a million episodes and i I had seen about four of those movies so the ones i have listened to i really enjoy quite a bit super fun night like some of the nicest people ever yeah uh, some some other podcast pals are logan nate and thon over at ghoulish university also super super cool people and they've been kind enough to have us on their show a few times and yeah we just had Thon on here last week and yeah look forward to talking to them more and being on theirs and them being on ours or whatever it's been it's been a lot of fun just get some dude all different... Thon couldn't get a fucking word in man you were just like you were on it last episode not knocking out... you like you just because you don't <laughs> talk I... <laughs> very much like normally like, cause I, well, like like when I edit sometimes I'm like fuck I need to like transition better or this but you just fucking took the ball man it yeah, was you funny. Were full pepe sylvia <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah my my autism levels were off the charts that day so <laughs> sorry about that um, no it was good man it was super it was comprehensive funny and because yeah. we had gone back and forth on the description and then when i read it when you put that little thing in the end about me talking a lot it didn't bother me at all but there was a small part of me that's like all right <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, Jim. it wasn't. It was. It wasn't like a knock at you. Would like I just kind of felt bad that we had <laughs> Nate on and he didn't get to talk too much. But that's his own fucking fault. Speak up, bro. Yeah, Nate, the bitch, get steamrolled. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> great guy, great pod. Um, a couple other shout outs, and yeah. So that was Cut Above Podcast, Ghoulish University. Check them both out. They're both really good. A uh, couple, couple other friends of the show, Dick Dog. I mean, we can't. I mean, what else can you say other than Dick Dog? Um, yeah. You can find him on uh, Megan's Law and Near You. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> just kidding. It was expunged. <laughs> just kidding. He's That's definitely the valid Victorian of the show. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, staring, <laughs> staring John Kenyon. He's been on a few times now. Good dude. I assume you're going to put some of their links in the... In the show notes, like for John, John's got a Twitch channel. Yeah, and I don't have it offhand, but yeah, all that shit, um, it's going to be a fat info yeah, I think, dump. I think his, show I think his channel's linkage. called Kinetic Onslaught, but I'm not positive on the spelling, so... S-L-O-T. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Look at you. Yeah, all that'll I mean, be in the show why, notes. This is why Chris is just the, guy, the fucking man. I'm uh, on our buddy it. Jimmy, buddy Jimmy came on for the last <laughs> Dick Dog episode. That was fun. You can find Dick him at Whisper. his home his home address which we will post in the show notes as well yeah uh, as long as along with his real phone number and uh, <laughs> i don't know his microsoft teams info so you can find him 
uh, Miles. Miles, that was a fun episode when he was on to do Possession, which is one of the weirdest fucking movies we've done over yeah. the last year. But like that dude a lot. I'd like to have him back too, if, if possible. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah, he's a big uh, uh, Carpenter fan as well. Um, well, I don't want to speak for him. I know he likes a couple Carpenter films. But like there's a, a couple crown that... molding or just baseboards or like doors or? Uh, no. Oh, John uh, Carpenter. Finishing. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. This this list of shout outs is reminding me of, Jim, I know you'll remember this and love it. The When Mike Tyson was fighting Peter McNeely. Oh, yeah. And he's doing the, he's doing the shout outs. I don't know if he's like a Philly guy, but he's like, my brother. My mother. I don't know if you want to clip that. Curly. In point. It's so funny. It's like last Dude. but not least. Stunning. And last but not least. <laughs> yeah. Medfield. Medfield. <laughs> I and think he just went like out Massachusetts. And, he just went out and promptly got his ass kicked. <laughs> Snubby. Yeah. Dude. Dude, I but remember last, that. And then he cashed in on off the back of that. They had it was when the stuffed crust pizza just came out in like 96 97 at pizza hut and he got in the ring and he gets knocked out by an ass end of a stuffed crust slice like mm. they like they drama <laughs> did a dramatization of the mike tyson fight with a fucking slice of stuffed crust uh yeah god i don't know if you remember it was a big marketing thing with the stuffed crust pizza that they would flip it around and eat it crust first Yep. And even mm-hmm. just as a little fat kid watching it, like, I will never eat a piece of pizza like that. That doesn't make any sense. You got to no. save the crust for the end. Right. And the crust is, you've already made the crust doper. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you get to the, the finish line. It's like, ah, uh, crust. No, now it's like, yeah, this you do is the what old school for. hack where you had to take a fucking string cheese and loop it up yourself. And it's like, they yep. just, it's like a uncrustable. They've done it for you. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> stuff crust. If you're going Pizza Hut, don't get out of my face unless it's uh, stuffed crust. It's the only way Absolutely. Fly. Yeah, pizza Thank you. sucks. Other than stuffed crust. What? Yeah, it's garbage. All right. <laughs> Don't get Chris going on the pizzone. Whew. Oh, God. Why'd you say that? Keep going or else I'm going to go on a tangent. <laughs> well, I think Would you that, say that's it's the best of both worlds or what? So the old school Pizone was good, but they brought it back in like 2019. It sucked shit. And recently they've started selling these things like pizza. I think they just call them calzones now at Pizza Hut. <laughs> That's a bastardization. Pizza hand pies. Yeah, some some stupid shit. Cool. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of everyone we wanted to shout out. And uh, met, there's many more other fans, too. I, I want to thank Straight Chilling. Also, they have like a promo page on their Slack that they let us uh, shamelessly plug every week. And there's, there's multiple other folks on there that have listened and, and shown us love. So we appreciate you guys as well for anyone we're leaving out. Um, I wanted to transition real quick into, I, I pulled the, some of the stats for this last year. And so I have out of the 52, the top episodes by download. Um, do you want to take a guess maybe at like the top three? What do you think the top three downloads would be Steve? Um, hmm. I remember seeing I feel like the Johnny Depp one was pretty popular, right? It's up there. It's not in okay. the top three though. Um, the Jason Simpson one. Nope, it's up there too. Damn. So are are all top three movies? No, actually, okay. only one of them is. Um, hmm. I know I'm putting Josie Wales. In the spot. Huh? Josie Wales. Nope, it's Damn. up there too though. <laughs> It's in the triple digits, but no, it's not top three. Yeah, I would have guessed the same things as Steve, like the true crime ones, just because more people are bound to search those things out. So now I'm I'm curious what they are. Yeah. Yeah. So the top three are number one is Christine, actually. Which really? Yeah, I I'm proud of that fact Weird. because that was just me and you talking about a movie, and I that's one of that's one of my favorites that we've recorded is it's a good one. I had a lot of fun on that episode. I think yeah. that and Scout's Guide. Yeah, that was a ton of fun. Yeah. Uh, but the top three is Christine with 301 downloads. The Asia Degree. Oh, interesting. Number two at 300 yeah. downloads, so they're right there. And then Coors Light with Dick Volume One, 227. Oh, three. nice. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool that uh, it was like a even a lot mix of, of like there. <laughs> interview, true crime, and movie all made the top three. Mixed bag. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, so yeah, d- I mean the Coors Light 
one, two, three, four is kind of newer, but the, the first three are in the top 10 for sure. Those, those have gotten like the, some of the biggest reception for sure. I think here I got to count real quick. I think Chris, you've been on one, two, three, four, five, six episodes. So you're the reigning guest champion. Hell yeah. Dick's in there with four. John's on there with three. Uh, Hydra's been on twice. We've had the straight chill. Yeah. Pretty cool. So we're closing in on, I, I, I checked it the other day, or this morning. I think we're at 4,775 downloads oh, nice. uh, thus far. So I think we have another like week to try to eclipse. And I can fudge maybe a couple days if we get over 5,000. Uh, I thought that was kind of a cool figure yeah. too, just like apropos of nothing. Uh, it just sounds like a neat figure. So if we could get over the 5,000 mark, I thought that would be pretty neat. Nonetheless, I've been pretty gobsmacked by the uh, the reception and like how much people seem to, to like the show. Uh, not like we're, we're making any money or anything, but uh, it's kind of validating when, cause it, there is a lot of work that goes into it that, that people don't really realize, but um, uh, more so oh, yeah. it, it's just been a good time. It's been a fun hobby yeah. and it's been something that I'm, I'm proud of actually like kind of following through with. Cause I have a really bad tendency of wanting them half ass house projects. So this this was kind of a little bit more meant a little bit more for me too. So um, anything yeah. else you want to add off the heels of that uh, self stroking, <laughs> um, Steve? Before we get into some fun sound bites, uh, no, not really. I mean, I kind of have the same same mindset. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, even if it was five hundred downloads or five. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't doesn't really bother me that much because it's just been fun either way and. Yeah, we've seen some cool movies, some not so cool movies, but yeah, either way, it's been fun. <laughs> Looking forward to keeping it going. Word. Yeah, I, and on that front too, I wanted to thank you for uh, keeping up with it and and your interest and in, and in like uh, uh, like because I I could see at the beginning, you know, it felt like all right, we're we're doing this thing, we're trying something out, and I wasn't sure which way it was going to go. If you're going to get sick of it, and then if you're just going to placate me to like because you know i was digging it and and kind of just sticking around when your heart wasn't in it but it was cool like each each episode that we got going on like you'd start hitting me up like hey when's the next show and like so i could i could see like the interest so that that's fun too when you when you don't have to guess like uh, is this something we should keep going with waiting for the other shoe to drop but yeah i mean you've, you've been a good sport and actually added a lot to the show in ways that i i didn't think that's been another fun part about this is just kind of just doing it and just seeing where it goes having your yeah. like idea of how we wanted to do the show and then this is what has turned out um and i also did want to uh add i don't know if we talked about it last episode my uh, approval rate for movies strictly speak is at a 86.1 so i'm pretty satisfied with that uh and i was yeah. shocked that you like San- santa sign gray I, I did not think you're gonna like that. So, uh, yeah, there are have been like three episodes. Possession was one of them. Santa Sangre, and I want to say there was a third one that was sort of artsy like that that I just could not believe Steve liked. Creepy I was shocked. Maybe? Which one? I haven't seen that. So, oh, okay. Which one, Jim? I said croupier. Oh, um, maybe, well, and also uh, to be fair, Possession I, was just south. Of the the Mason Dixon approval line, yeah, <laughs> I didn't I didn't really dislike it, but I, I couldn't I couldn't give it a a thumbs up. So it might have just been the Mothman prophecies. I was shocked both of you liked it, dude. I love that fucking. I love a good one. I like that one. Are you thinking it's of... got a lot of nostalgia built in? If I w- if I saw that movie in 2015, I probably wouldn't feel the same. Or now, no, I well, I saw it in 2022 way. and I liked it. <laughs> no accounting for taste. <laughs> yeah. Are you thinking that no, because you're thinking of one that I did like. I thought maybe you were thinking of Versus, which was our fun intro to Chris and then in and probably my least favorite movie that we have watched all year. I just want to say like we were talking a bunch of shit on that movie, but I was I like I would still give it like a three and a half out of five. Like I was just being very harsh in that episode. <laughs> I still think it's pretty good. C yeah. minus, huh? Yeah, I like it a lot. Now I'm curious. Uh, what, maybe maybe what, the battery. Or, 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 I really think it was probably just Possession and Santa Sangre. Okay. Have you ever seen the battery by chance, Chris? No. You've told me to watch it Okay. before, like years ago. 
but I'm just such an asshole that I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm bad. Um, all right. So yeah, I guess moving along to uh, a couple of sound bites. I again, if I get going on a roll here and it's too much, just just flag me down. I'm gonna kind of bounce around. I wanted to get a smattering from like smoothing from um the episode one all the way through but there's just too much shit not enough time in the day so i think i got down to the low 30s to the present um there's been a lot of fun uh moments but i'll just get into it right um Uh, your blood type is a ragu (laughs) (laughs) that was I think when that was, Dick was trying to give blood and they literally yeah. could not squeeze a drop out of his finger. Yeah. So they gave <laughs> it was him like stick. jelly or some shit. And they're like, thanks, but no thanks. Here's a sticker that says, Hey, I tried to give blood today. Be nice to me. Does and it really say snacks. I tried to give blood? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's fucked up. I think they save uh, it for the people who like pass out when they see the needle as well. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I know someone like that who decided to get a full back tattoo and passed out it's good mean, times. Least, that sounds like the move, though, to pass out for a big tattoo like that. They, they still they can't work on you? Any reputable shop will not tattoo you while you're passed out. Oh, okay. I mean, at least he, <laughs> he was trying to get it on his back, so maybe he thought, I won't see the needle. I don't know. Seems like a good strategy. Uh, here's uh, the first part of this. And that was going to... Make me valedictorian. <laughs> what about valedictorian? <laughs> I pre-gamed a little bit with some cord lights, and you know, I'm not too bright, anyways. I didn't realize. Oh, you know, valedictorian. But, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize there was such a pause between that. Yeah, Maybe dude, that's the pause when I was looking at you. Sold it. Yeah. When I was, I was looking at you on the both- camera, like. Yeah, you, we both looked at each other like uh, because of the, the the source material was kind of heavy. Do we want to lay into him <laughs> on this one right out of the like, gate? Sorry, I can't let this go. <laughs> yeah, I played chicken and I swerved, and you you kept plowing along, which I <laughs> thank God because that. Do that you have the awesome. clip where he came back and he's like, "All right, I want to set the record straight. Hey, I want to clear this shit up. I know it's valid Victorian, <laughs> motherfuckers. I'll just slur my words. I feel like he Sorry, said valid Victorian again just now. Yeah, he did. <laughs> valid. I said valid. Dude, I'm. You said valid. <laughs> you said valid. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again one time cleanly. Whoa. Valid Victorian. <laughs> one more time. Clean. Valid Victorian. No. <laughs> valid. No. <laughs> Holy shit. Fuck, that was oh, funny. Man. And then he proceeded to say, right. okay, well, I wasn't a salutatorian either. God. Yeah. That was, I don't that, sound like that. Yeah. I have right. voice modulation. He planned that confrontation. Like, all right, fucking get set the record straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was just doing a dart on his back patio, just fuming about it. Yeah. <laughs> Walk back in. Give yeah. these fuckers a piece of my mind. <laughs> Can you replay the beginning of that one just real quick? The, All right. Hey, I want to clear this shit up. I know it's valid Victorian, <laughs> motherfuckers. I'll just slur. Fuckers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so good. Fuck. Uh, so. Uh, you've, also, uh, you've also thrown your back out wiping your ass. So. <laughs> I did do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you have an electric ass wiper now, so that's still a danger. (laughs) Uh, All right, let me try to bounce around and get away from... uh, I think he even called in sick that morning, like, I fucking threw my back out, wiping my ass. (laughs) Yeah, like, (laughs) Like, you kind of left that part out, you know? (laughs) Uh, Here's an old one from an older episode. Did you ever hear about it in passing, or... In your no. punk goth era? Nope, not at all. Okay. In my what? What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> your punk goth era? You can really not tell the bit. audio quality. That, I think that one I pulled, that was like the near dark episode from like episode seven, I think. But yeah, that was, was it. That was, a was really it, um, Chris, was it Brotherhood of the Wolf? You were surprised that I liked? Because that was kind of an RC one, right? No, yeah. I yeah, think after not. watching it, I was like, anyone in their right mind would like this. 
Yeah. It was fun. That was a fun one to read some of the the shitty IMDb reviews <laughs> from that one. It was good. Wow. Or My that, favorite that's shitty that... IMDb review is the one for It Follows. Oh, yeah. That's the one. <laughs> dot, you... dot, dot. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> where you, you played us like, off against one another with like, oh, <laughs> guess yeah. the. That yeah, was so that was, good. That was wow. awesome. Uh, let's see. I mean, I remember an episode where he took all of the other cops to a shooting range and he was like, you're going to shoot a matchstick from 25 yards. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about Steven Seagal and Steven moonlighting Seagal. as a sheriff or a cop. Oh. Uh, that motherfucker. <laughs> Here's an oldie, but a goodie. So Demon Time, you're not a fan? No. I love how exasperated. I would say Kanye just now was on Demon Time. (laughs) 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 You were just so not fucking mad. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, uh, here's... (laughs) God. I wanted to, so many of these revolve around Dick Dog, which is no surprise. But yeah, it's yeah. like go out and make me some license plates or something. Hey, can I take a piss real quick? Yep. yep. Yeah, but go to the bathroom first. <laughs> <laughs> Such a funny guy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I forgot about dude. I swear to God, compiling this last night, I was just laughing like an idiot like fucking my neighbors probably think i'm a lunatic because i opened the window and i was because i was hot and shit and i wanted to feel the cool air and i was just sitting here laughing for like a fucking hour or a bunch of shit i forgot oh, about here's I another really remember great. that it's like i know 300 bucks is a lot in these days but yeah i looked it up that's 800 trillion dollars in 2022 <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah <laughs> I almost went full Kreischer there, man. I apologize. I that one almost ejecto cedo. Yeah, I think that was chair. I think that was the top <laughs> two or three times, like hardest I've laughed on the on the show for sure. It just Dude, it got God it just damn hit it. Me so I forgot deep. to find the the one of of you reacting to the fucking uh, damn it oh, the the burbs hate mail. Yeah, I'll have to add that to the, a follow up episode. I didn't have enough yeah. time because that was. That was the I've I've known Steve ten plus years and I've seen him have a, a hearty chortle in my time. Almost I think that's years. top one of you, yeah, like you, and it's almost akin to like seeing my grandfather laugh because I've only seen him laugh like that like twice in my life. Like, yeah, that was good because that's not yeah. something that happens every day. So good on you. So Bob. who was the true culprit behind that? I know there was some controversy. Yeah, it was some real weird Prince controversy. Uh, it was Bob. That's right. Bo Bear from uh, Straight Chilling. I just, he's a kooky guy. You got to watch him. He's a card. I, I don't i don't know what he was trying to do, but he. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, he he tried to present as our other friend Hydraberg, also fellow uh, Straight Chilling Slack member that I've known since 2017. Super cool dude. Sweet dude. Um, he, I think Bob got wind of the fact that Steve didn't like the burbs and like Nick got like up in a tizzy about it. So I think Bob was like, Ooh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be funny guy. And I'll, <laughs> I'll pretend to be him and say this like fucking just this torrential, like, like shitting on Steve, but, <laughs> but then I mean, they kept it low, going until it became risk. awkward in the same way that like you go to a gas station every day, but you never say, Hey, what's your name? And so you've been going there for two years and you're afraid, like if you're like me and you're afraid to say, Hey, my name's this, your name. I think it was like that because he, he wouldn't cop to it. Great and analogy. I, I know <laughs> it was just poor, but Nick was just like, I was- that wasn't me. I was just thinking it was like a low risk proposition for Bob because it's like I'm gonna fucking torch this guy, and if he if he doesn't like it and gets like all weird and defensive, hey, then mean, it's man. somebody else's name. But if he does, <laughs> but if he does like it and is a good sport, then I will reveal myself as the puppet master. But, yeah, uh, yeah, your the gas station name thing works too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hate those situations. Like. Too much times elapsed, man. He had like eight giant cans of Crisco in his basement. That was so fucking weird. I don't know what you would use all that for, but 
Lou. Gee, have, gee, have you ever? Oh boy, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Alert. <laughs> what the? Fuck? That was the first oh, boner alert drop. The inaugural boner alert. Better time because you were like, great, "What the fuck was that?" What a great time to drop it too. Yeah, is that prisoners? Yeah, yeah. Are you a fan of that movie, by the way, Chris? Yeah, it's a good one. Nice. Yeah, that was a fun one to talk about. We just got we got going. That was one of our few three hour endeavors that we just kept. Yeah, was it really that jabbering? One? Yeah, that one's got a lot of cool like subtext and a lot of moving parts. And I'm glad we covered that. Uh, I mean, we can't leave without doing this one. You guys right. have your own interpretations of how that story goes. <laughs> well, from what I remember. <laughs> The funniest part of the story was he pulled out a ten dollar bill and like no. halfway handed it to you no. and said, <laughs> "What did he say? Can I touch you? Can I touch you? <laughs> Can I touch Can you? Can I touch you? <laughs> I mean, he didn't at least, at least he asked. Money. He offered the money. <laughs> it wasn't ten bucks. That's I mean, super just... generous. I thought it was ten bucks yeah. because from." From the day forward where Dick... In the mis- late 50s, they didn't have $10 like that back then. <laughs> well, when he mistakenly told you that story and you told us, $10 later became a measurement of currency of touches. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> hey, can I borrow 20 bucks? Like, no, that's two touches. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I knew I could There's kick so- his ass, so that's why I got in the car. Yeah. <laughs> I, I figured, you know, I needed a ride and I could take I, him. I could take him. So I got in. Uh, take him, he did. Dude, so many of these are <laughs> from Dick Dog now that I'm scrolling through. It was funny when he showed us a picture. I'm like, what's going on in this picture? Did you did you just suffer a traumatic brain injury? Because the look on his face, he's so mentally vacant. He's like, no, that was the first time I, that was the first time I got to watch ESPN in a hotel room. <laughs> i remember highlighting that he was so mentally vacant he's like where'd you get that picture <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh oh this is when you tried malort for the first time and i uh, i texted him like that was a gift todd all i know about <laughs> yeah <laughs> i want my painting back All I told Jim about this stuff, I was like, all I know is that I've heard it just tastes like Bigfoot's dick, which I think is pretty accurate. You got to play tummy sticks after you drink Malort. Do you know anything about Malort, Chris? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? He must. Yeah. Yeah. What's your history with it? I told this, but you were probably three sheets to the wind, as you like to say. But uh, yeah. Damn it. I didn't think it was that bad. It's just the aftertaste sticks with you for it years. Lingers. Yeah. <laughs> Still there. <laughs> Still there from 2018. To this day. Honestly, yep. I, I've said it before. If you cut it with something pineapple or like tropical, it's not as bad. But yeah, I mean, it's it's re- it's like stunt drinking because it's like, it's only like 35%. It's like, it's not going to get you that shit. Well, and for how shitty like, it tastes. Like, if you're just trying to like bow up on someone and just like, assert dominance and look at look them in their in their eye and try to just yeah. take a shot like <laughs> that's what it is it's the american equivalent <laughs> yeah. of like the hakarl like the rotted shark they eat in iceland or like yeah. maggot cheese it's Ugh. one of those things like you just pretend people pretend to like it so they yeah, can you, act fucking macho or whatever yeah you gotta fake the funk for sure or what's that um what's that scandinavian fish that you see videos of guys eating and they're just like puking immediately it's like soften strong or yeah it's like sir strumming or something yeah like that. that's closer is it like it's like rancid they've allowed it to go like rancid yes. but it's still edible. <laughs> uh, i actually sure. went to a uh, museum of disgusting foods in sweden that's and they allowed low. you at the end they have a little sampling thing where you can try all of it but oh, i was about to go eat so I'm like, I'm not going to fucking puke before I go eat. <laughs> the only thing I tried was a uh, salt licorice, which is like a, a popular thing in Scandinavian countries. And I actually liked it more than regular licorice. Hmm. That sounds right up my alley. I'm a big, yeah. f- 
I'm a big fan of salt. Is it like it's a, not like actual salt? It's a different type of salt that has more of like a a vinegary salt salty taste to it. Oh, cool! So like a malt liquor licorice. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, huh? What t- what were you doing in Sweden? Just looking at some disgusting foods. Nice sojourning. <laughs> yeah, I was just seeing the sights. Nice. Eat, pray, loving. Yeah, that's how I got my groove back. <laughs> <laughs> he came back with cornrows. Chrissy got his groove back in Sweden. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to go to Sweden. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, isn't, isn't that your your primary nationality? Yeah. Is that from your your Faja's side or? Yes, there's some on my mom's side, but mostly from my dad's side. Yeah. Nice. Well, his primary nationality is American because he's <laughs> from America. <laughs> yes. You can get out. Um. <laughs> Got Malort running through my veins. That's how American I am. <laughs> Which is funny because Malort is Swedish. So that's another reason I was like, oh, dude, this is even more a reason to ship him a bottle and see if it like fucking like awakens, you know, like something <laughs> within your um, I just put on a Viking strictly hat, off I the mean, title of this review alone. This is a one out of 10 on IMDb. <laughs> the movie that ate my brain worst ever. This is the worst movie I've seen in so long. I can't remember a worse movie. Perhaps there was one that was worse in the past, but this movie is the new champion of worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I rarely write reviews. Nice. Doubt it. <laughs> but this piece of crud is such a waste of time. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, it's such a waste of time that I'm writing it for those people that enjoy Hugh Jackson. I like his stuff. <laughs> and want to see a movie with him in it. Even the acting stunk, including Hugh. I guess torture really isn't his bag. What the fuck does that mean? If I could give this movie a minus 1000, I would. Oh my lord. That person sounds fucking deranged. That was one of I that give so it a good. negative one thousand. Talk. That was someone talking about prisoners. That wasn't just. They just bad. ruined Hugh Jackson's entire career, <laughs> dude. There's so many things to unpack there, but yeah, like the Hugh Jackson, the and then the line about the, the torture. Like, uh, yeah, that one really. It's om- it's almost mm. too funny to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt like. To me, that one felt like that really has to be an insane person because you yeah. can't be that good, you know, kind right. of thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> if that makes well, sense. Well, yeah. I mean, what was it the last time I was on? There was some review that started talking about human trafficking. I don't remember that. I can't remember I what movie either. we were talking about, but it had nothing to do with human trafficking. <laughs> oh, it was Unforgiven. And they're oh, okay. like, you think the characters in this movie have it bad? Someone's being human trafficked <laughs> right oh. now. <laughs> Like, dude, this has nothing to do with. Like, this is this is your platform, the review section of Unforgiven. Talk about <laughs> a talk about a bummer alert. I don't have it queued up. I'm sorry. Before he came up for cross examination, there was a break. I went out to have a cigarette, and as I pulled my cigarette out, he looked at me, and there's no love lost between us. And he said, um, "Suck down another cancer stick." And I just looked at him and I said, I always enjoy a cigarette before sex because I wanted him to know I was going to screw him. Uh, I don't think the message was lost on him. And I did. And I did. God, that guy's such a bad motherfucker. Yeah. (laughs) That's another one of my favorite apps for sure. Here's, yeah, that was a really fun episode too. That one, I was surprised, dude. That one got no love. No one knows that movie. People, check out fucking... It won an Oscar, god damn it. Yeah. Uh, Murder on a Sunday Morning from 2000... So did Shakespeare in Love. Stop it. All right. Fair play. Um, it's so but good. But still, though. it's it's fucking great. Uh, this one... Yeah, so maybe in here. 10 or 15 years, they'll start fucking like rediscovering like my brother and me and shit, and we can watch the Goo Show. <laughs> <Do>. like, <laughs> <laughs> Watching like heavyweights yeah. and shit. Get on the scale. Get off the scale. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I know about that that, the that ties back camp. to your father, the Go yep. Show. Yeah. Because I remember one. I was like, "Hey, Steve, you ever seen my brother and me? Have you ever seen my brother and me?" 
Chris, do you remember that? Yeah, wasn't there only like six episodes? There's only that? like one or two seasons. Yeah, it's very quick, very short. Yeah, episodes. I haven't seen it in a very like since it was a current show. I do remember one show. I think Alfie was like gonna be in a play where he was Robin Hood and he was like trying to listen to tapes to memorize the lines or something. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that that rings some bells for sure. All I really remember the most besides Alfie's like crazy. He always had that dope like Alonzo morning fucking line through the hair that i asked my mom for and said no um <laughs> and uh good call goo. mom yeah that she yeah. saved me actually yeah goo was so he he stole that entire show and i remember i was like have you ever seen that show steve yeah and he's like yeah and like i i don't know i'm probably butchering it but you like to like you like the show but you also like to fuck with your dad about like oh we want to watch my brother and me, we want to watch this. And he like did not like it like right off the bat. So he, he was aware of it. So when you asked him, he's like, no, we're not going to watch the goo show. No. Uh, <laughs> what was it's, it? Did it's, I butcher it's that? similar in, in hindsight, I realized how much of a terrible show it was, <laughs> yeah. but he, he would use that <laughs> as like the touchstone of shitty kid stuff that we would watch. Yeah. So if, if I was like, Hey, do you mind if I watch TV? He would use that as like, I don't know the straw man of like, no, we're not going to watch the goo show or whatever it is. You want to, you know, <laughs> that was his worst example of stuff that I wanted that was to watch. The sacrificial. Like, okay. He must be just wanting to watch bullshit like goo. Yeah. I mean, to his credit, he was absolutely right. Cause we watched some terrible shows when we were kids. Oh man. I just remember that the goo punch episode was the best when it's like fantasy land and yeah. he's like this big <laughs> rapper and it's all goo goo. And he's like promoting goo punch and all this. Like, yeah. <laughs> anybody listening that's between a certain age of like 32 and 38 will probably pick up on that. Um, I always thought it was weird how in saving private Ryan, like Vin Diesel's last words were like to how Tom Hanks were like, Hector's going to be running three Honda Civics with spoon <laughs> engines. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that. You're fucking asshole. <laughs> You're such a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that one got me good. <clears throat> yeah. like, Give me a Corona. This is all about family. <sighs> you can have any beer you want as long as it's a Corona. <laughs> Dude, you get down there. Them octaves, man. Fine. Yeah, I watch a lot of Vin Diesel. He taught me. <laughs> I learned from the best. Dude, I, I can't remember what it was. It's this guy has like TikToks or Instagram reels. And he's, they found like they could trace DNA back and they were able to model the face of like the progenitor of like a shit ton of like DNA in the world. <laughs> and it looked exactly like Vin Diesel. And the guy's like, he's like, Hey, come here. Are you telling me I'm related? I came from Vin Diesel. Cause it's all about fa and all that. <laughs> that was super funny because it looked dead nuts. Like Vin Diesel was like <laughs> where like the life spring like sprouted out from, uh, I just want to say, if anyone wants to get pedantic, Paul Walker was the one that actually delivered that line, but I just had to shoehorn Fast and Furious in there somewhere. <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference. I don't I don't keep up with the, the fast canon, so it still elicited a, a hearty chortle <laughs> from me, that's for sure. <laughs> um, God. But those fuckers can <laughs> eat, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, oh, uh, believe me, we had goats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's such a richard line man just like believe oh, me we had goats we had goats. <laughs> like, what the fuck does that mean <laughs> like you're the fucking lance armstrong of goats like god <laughs> no i just jokingly <laughs> told this story about that i never told anybody because you're not supposed to take a ride from a stranger um, I, I jokingly, have, I jokingly told this true story, <laughs> <laughs> dude. That's a classic Steveism too. Like when you know you got someone, you say something, and you do that little <laughs> right after. Like that's such a Steve Hallmark. Oh man, he's a stinker for sure. <laughs> He'll get you. Well, oh, I think boy. one of my my most famous ones that Jim has famously adopted is I steal like, for sure is um. 
when somebody's like way overreacting or freaking out about something sort of inconsequential is to just kind of let it breathe for a minute and then say like, well, at least you didn't overreact. Dude, that's <laughs> it's so it's such a good one. It's biting. It's nuclear if you use it against a woman that you cohabitate with. Yeah. When you told me that, it like immediately like seared into my brain and I was like, <laughs> I can't wait to use this against my ex now. Um yeah. because it would just <sighs> like dumping <laughs> kerosene onto a, like a plot of lava. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's a man, scorched earth approach because it's not going to solve anything, no, but no, it'll make it's like a healthy things. relationship. I can't yeah. imagine why it ended. <laughs> yeah, it was super, <laughs> super healthy. I skipped my fucking Motorola flip phone because I got called out for eating the last of the ice cream sandwiches <laughs> in the, the fridge. Not Dude, the last, and the guy we... All what's that? Of- it wasn't the last of the ice cream sandwiches. It was okay. I, I didn't think you were going to pick up on that. I I didn't eat a whole box. Let's let me clarify. I ate <laughs> it was like all maybe, of them and the last one. It was maybe <laughs> I will say in my heart of hearts, it was two thirds of a box of ice cream sandwiches. The old yeah, school the, style with like the two like the it's the cardboard graham oh, yeah, yeah cardboard graham cracker with vanilla in between in betwixt, and so two thirds of this box was like. Let's say 12 sure. out of 18. Yeah. I mean, even if it's 8 out of 12, the the beautiful <laughs> quote that came before he skipped his phone like a rock, though, is what is permanently seared into my mind as him and his ex are like screaming at each other on the phone. He's like, if you didn't want me to eat all the ice cream sandwiches, why did you put them in the freezer? Which is such a bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> well, Should have left them on the counter. Yeah. It, the easy answer is like, well, because of course that's where they go. But it was just such uh, that a funny, is what like, we call victim blaming, Jim. If you yeah. didn't want me to eat them all, why'd you put them there? <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't have been standing there. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all I kept thinking was I kept thinking back to Charles Durning in uh, Home for the Holidays, where it's like it's in the fridge. You put it in the fridge. I'm gonna get it, but it didn't come across as eloquently um, or well reasoned. My favorite part of that is like. Uh, our buddy Jimmy, who came on for Coors Light Volume 4, he had like spidey sense when all this was happening. Yeah. And he knew when I closed the phone, he's like, don't do it. Yeah. He know he knew a full like four to <laughs> seven seconds before yeah. what I was going to do. And I like looked at him like, Ugh, like in uh, blacked out. And he knew it, it was a foregone cl- conclusion. And then I, yeah, I skipped my phone across the church rock gravel road. Yep. Um, then the slow walk after it to go pick it up <laughs> yeah, and see like, if it was fuck. still working. I was like, is this thing okay? Oh, is, when you first said it, I would thought you skipped it like on a lake. Oh, no. No, this <laughs> was like between a work break. Like, yeah, man, that was fun. You were truly on demon time. Yeah, I was. But I don't know, man. Anchovies on pizza goes pretty fucking hard. <laughs> Dude, it's awesome on everything. And I'm a fan even of the anchovy paste, which is really nice because you can just fucking <laughs> on anything you want. <laughs> See, that's that's where I have to take a break from you because the I- <laughs> that was another big laugh was like, Dude, oh, what an epic response. I have to take, I need to step away from you. Like, I knew who this person was for a second, and now this has changed the whole paradigm. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. I, this is where I need to take a break from you. Like, <laughs> I listened to that last night and I almost lost my shit. <clears throat> Whew, I'm like crying over here. This is another one. That was the last time I was on here. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You were on for, uh, Baseball. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Get a lot of mileage out of that one. Yeah. Dude, I told Steve offline, like when you just blurted that out when I I think I was going on a stream of consciousness stupid bullshit and you broke it up perfectly with baseball. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Dude, that did baseball, man. It's always been baseball. This guy's a fucking sniper. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I needed. It's you temper the show because I'll, I'll get going on these really just stupid 
rants or tangents about something you did you just yeah it was surgical the sharp the baseball <laughs> insertion baseball i don't know why man that just went straight to the headshot from 1500 meters uh i got a couple more if you guys are up for it yeah yeah go for it mm, we got all the heavy hitters i think i saved a couple let's keep the good times rolling with chris like a uh, bucket hat yeah, yeah. that's kind of what i was thinking too fucking gilded age shit that this old fuck came up with that you don't know what it means <laughs> it's even funnier too because like listening to your show you're like you know, you know like you're like this my mi- like your old show channel channel 83 you're like this mild mannered like pretty measured even keeled like you're doing reviews of really obscure shit but then like you would you would slip in like things that are like barbed you know and uh (laughs) that's what really like i was like oh man this guy is fucking he's got he's got it together you know like i think it was the jacko episode that you (sighs) really fucking sold me especially like you calling out the fact that he's never like really called jacko and he has like 10 names and like (laughs) and the whole the (laughs) the little rhyme the mr jack break your back and all that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he's like talking about and he's like this movie it's just dog shit like <laughs> it just came out of nowhere and i was like all right this guy's fucking um, good times <laughs> <laughs> but seriously dude jacko that's that's an excellent episode my other favorite one that you turned me on to a couple classics of uh rutger hauer steve i know you're a oh, fan yeah. of he, that was like the one glimmer of hope for you in uh blade runner blade runner yeah was yeah, you guys should do the Hitcher next October. I, I think Steve would probably like that. Yeah, that's a good call, man. That is a good. Yeah, he. It sucks. It's like there's. It's weird, like how there's some of those kind of actors. Like I think of like Rutger Hauer and like maybe like not a one to one, but like let's talk about like in this realm. I think of like Rutger Hauer, Michael Bean or Bean, like you like to say. Is it Bane or well, Bane? I don't like know. He, like he likes to say. That's how he pronounces his name. So we you know should probably Michael, say Bean. Okay. You know who Michael Bean is, right, Steve? Yeah, he's in The Rock. And yeah. Tombstone? He's in Aliens. Tombstone. Tombstone. Navy played, Seals. K2. He played Ringo. His probably most famous role is Kyle Reese in the original Terminator, I would argue. I would say Ringo, Johnny Ringo. Yeah, that's fair too. Probably play mo- most commercial. Yeah, Johnny Ringo. Um, he was actually just on a podcast of uh, with I don't know if you guys listen to it's I think it's called Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum, the bald dude who played Lex Luthor in the uh, uh, Smallville. Yeah. That guy's actually it, yeah. I always thought he was kind of a Streisand, but he's really rocking it, and <laughs> he's really rocking the shit. No, he seems like a really good hang, honestly. And yeah. he gets like these kind of like tertiary, like sub A list, like B C actors, comedians that come on. He's got a cool show. He just actually had Michael Bean on, which was really interesting. He was talking shit about the director who got fired, and then the second director who came in, like George Cosmatos. He was George talking P. Kind of, Cosmatos. Yeah. He was talking all kinds of mad shit about him. Dude, it's pretty rad. He was like, I said maybe five or six words to George Cosmatos, and it was hello, and then I saw the way he treated people under him on the food chain. Like, he said, like, get that extra over here, and it was a woman with her tits out or something. He's like, get that fat tit big titty bitch over here and he's like i saw after the way he talked to people under him on the food chain he's like my next like four or five words to him were like like he said something to michael bain and he's like go fuck yourself and he's like that's the last that's the rest of the shit that's the rest of the words i said to him on the filming of that movie tombstone i was like nice this guy's fucking awesome (laughs) um i put yeah so anyway tangent to rutger hauer i kind of put him in that sphere like michael bean um i lost my train of thought but there there's a few actors like that like that that just never really like made it i guess that that got pushed into a-list territory and i what do you think the reasons might be for that i know some people like eric roberts like they kind of got blacklisted and they had to take what they could get but i feel like these there's some of these action guys in like late 80s early 90s people like rutger hauer that just never really like broke out the way others did and maybe i don't know i think part of it for rutger hauer might be that he was in like right after 
Blade Runner. He was in Nighthawks with Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. And I think they kind of hated each other. Uh, And at that time, Stallone definitely had a lot of sway. So I don't, I'm just guessing maybe that had something to do with it. He's like, this guy's hard to work with. Yeah, fuck this guy. Like, had some influence, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Because I know pretty shortly thereafter, he was in Lady Hawk with Matthew Broderick, which that's actually a fun kind of like fantasy. Like, if you like Willow, I think you'd like that movie or like Excalibur. All those Willow heads out there. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, Willow's a banger, man. I love that movie. This fucking warthog fucks at the beginning always freaked me out as a kid. Uh, <laughs> it felt like a horror movie to me as a kid, honestly. And like some of the imagery with that fucking witch and the, the baby and all the blood sacrifice or whatever the fuck was going on. Her like weird magic shit. But um, yeah, I always wondered why Rutger Howard didn't break out. Like, cause he was pretty prolific in the eighties, like all the action movies he was in. And I mean, even the hitcher is, I, f- I feel like that's kind of come later on, like as like one of these cult deals, you know, like where it didn't get it's it's uh, just desserts when it came out. Yeah, well, the resurgence all happened when the Hitcher Two, starring Jake Busey, came out. Oh God, <laughs> dude, that's I've what really some... shown a light on it. Dude, I've seen some Jake Busey stinkers. Have you ever seen Black Cat Run? No, with Patrick Muldoon. That's a deep cut. HBO. Basically, just uh, Starship Troopers and Tomcats. I, I never saw Tom Katz. I knew him from Contact. You've seen Contact, right, Steve? No. With Jodie Foster? No. What did the what alien. did we just watch that had Jake Busey in it? What was he in? And because we were talking about it, I'm like, who, which guy is related to Gary Busey? And then as soon as he came on the screen, like, Jesus, this guy for sure. Look at those chompers. Yeah, he definitely inherited his father's teeth, his two front teeth for sure. Dude, I can't think of it because I don't think there's anything that we've seen that Jake. Or maybe Beasy's maybe it's just something we were talking about offline. We could have been talking about the Frighteners because he plays a pretty prominent role in that, and I like to bring that movie up a lot. But I don't know. Yeah, he pl- he plays like a no. A it was identity. F- That's right. Yeah, he gets mm-hmm. the baseball bat down the fucking. Check out throat. our fun episode on uh, Cut Above, right? Yeah. In the archives. I don't know what episode it was. 69. 80. Hell yeah. That's, yep, we'll go with that. Four, uh, episode 420. Here uh, we go. I got a couple more. Was this when you dropped the $2 in between the seat and the door jam? <laughs> and was this the same time? And then you came uh, in just swinging at everyone no, in the break room? That was this a was different, a different time. Yeah. I, okay. And to be fair, I think it was $3. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe it was 3 <laughs> Which yeah, actually he, explains the blow up. He just comes fucking Kramer through the break room door. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you motherfuckers took my three dollars? <laughs> and he just Dude, even just re listening to it, I was I was thinking like it was actually three dollars. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah. Steve's got the receipts, one might say. <laughs> That's one of your hated, isn't it? Yeah. You did it bring is. it up. Yeah. I'm trying to work all of them in. I hate it when people use it sincerely. I know Chris is just sitting in the bushes sniping. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> but when people I will use say, it, yeah, when people one use of my it, favorite dick things was when he said that he was washing himself with a rag on a stick, and neither <laughs> of you, got, neither of you, understood the reference, and you're like, "What? You're." fucking washing yourself with a rag why was there a stick (laughs) and then just the the last one when you 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 posted a picture of him as ned flanders and homer simpson i was like uh a man after my own heart yeah that was pretty epic and i think he learned his lesson from previous when he dressed up like homer to just skip the yellow face paint that was also very funny yeah Dude, I remember that day clear as shit when he came in. And I was like, that paint ain't going to hold up, man. Because <laughs> like, yeah, he had a full day of hucking boxes. Paint. Yeah. <laughs> was it really? I know you were making the joke, <laughs> but was it really like fucking like like Minwax or like like bare exterior I have no paint? Idea. It did okay. not. I don't think it was. I was like, well, it did not that. seem like it was suitable for human skin because it just immediately started... <laughs> He started overheating and dude, that's, that that's the plot of Goldfinger. 
<laughs> Dude, that white polo he had on was just, it, would, it had been rained on. Dude, no sooner had he put it on <laughs> than it started leaving his body. And this is late October. It wasn't like a very hot day. So yeah, I remember he even did like the three like black lines for Homer the top the top of Homer's head. He like he did it legit, but yeah, it just, it just started. It was raining. <laughs> <laughs> I got one from Staring John here that was pretty fun. Glossed over the beach scene where he's in those fuck those baby blues yeah, and bomb ass trunks, bro. Your boy <laughs> did just fucking me, man. <laughs> that look good, man. <laughs> I was waiting to see if you were going to play that because I didn't want to step on it. But yeah, I fucking laughed my ass off. <laughs> so fuck up me. <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh, all right. I, I, I got a few more, actually. Damn, I didn't think. We were- as a novella, as it were, in his 1985 <laughs> anthology collection, Skeleton. Yeah, so, that that book is basically the fucking hot dog of Stephen King books. They take all the <laughs> all the lips and noses and <laughs> shitty parts of a pig and just throw them on one thing. Like, oh, here's a book. <laughs> hey, but that is so, such a shitty book. Yeah, I really like the jaunt though. That's a fucking cool story. Talk is it better it. than Highlander? Well, few things <laughs> you know, are. I mean, we should have a moment of silence on the podcast for for the. Yeah, I'm just saying because that was your last second replacement for the Highlander. Good call. Starting yeah, now. That's enough. Yeah. Fifty thousand no get elephant in there. Fifty thousand get you Botan. Botan. <laughs> Is that like Kung Fu Panda or some shit? No. Oh god. Better strap in. Operation Dumbo Drop. Danny Gloves. Ray Liotta. Dude, Dennis Leary. I love that fucking movie. I told Steve that w- that came out in like 95. Me and my cousins went and watched it. And for, dude, from then on, like it was like 50,000 get you no elephant, 50,000 get you both. Ah! That's another one I fucking probably. I still don't get it. Never seen the movie. I've heard him say it a <laughs> hundred thousand times. Is that the, that's the actor James Hong, right? Is that yes. who's saying it? Because it yep. sounds like him. And I was like, that is he. I've never fucking seen whatever movie this is. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's really good. It's it's a Disney picture, but it came about at a time when like Disney was doing a lot of like weird live action shit and they were really they did like the uh what is that bug called? A bug's life? No, no, no. The like the VW bug Herbie. What the fuck is it? Yeah. They That's did that. They did like that darn cat. They did a bunch of shit from like 93 to like 98. They were trying to do like live action shit. And uh, like Tim Allen as the fucking shaggy dog and like jungle to jungle, the fucking. Uh, Hell yeah. That was so good. Obligatory. Home Improvement, man. That's just a good show. Um, (laughs) I don't think Uh, so, Jim. Chris, Um, can I ask your opinion on how do you feel about the movie Little Giant? Love it. I'm There's a big a thing. Rick Moranis head, but I haven't seen that in quite some time. Dude, that here's another deep pull. Big Bully. That's a good one. With yeah. Tom Arnold. Saw it in theaters. Green Eggs and Ham. Dude, watch Big Bully, Rick Moranis and Tom Arnold. Dude, he forgets to he checks out like Green Eggs and Ham as a kid and he goes back as a teacher and the fucking librarian's like old and crusty as shit. She's like, Green Eggs and Ham, you owe like two thousand six hundred and seventy five dollars <laughs> in life. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, stupid it's a dumb it's dumb funny but it's it's no honey i shrunk the kids it's that's weird like that one didn't gain any traction either that i feel like that it's like a cult big bully would be um what was the movie just before that we were talking about before? little giants Ice little Fox. giants little giants yes fuck yeah there's a thing going around of like miley cyrus did like an interview and she's got a real raspy fucking ass voice and they do a cut of the the kid from little giants that dog like this you know what i'm talking about yeah they do a side by side of like miley cyrus and dude it's like dead nuts like she it sounds like she's talking through like one of those like the people that fucking like that that chick in the old cigarette commercial where she gets oh, her yeah. like voice box out and she has to like suck down cigs through that fucking yeah. hole in her neck. <laughs> Is it Dude. the same kid from the little rascals, Froggy? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh man. With the fucking that mean ass like Will Byers mullet. Yeah, I saw like the fucking a- bowl cut bangs into mullet. 
I saw a picture of a ginger kid with a mullet that said, like, this kid was born with a suspended driver's license. <laughs> Yeah. And it reminded me of how one time Steve was talking about your alter ego, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin or yeah. Kyle. Kevin. Yeah. Dude, so you saw so a picture awesome. of Kwanzaa's son. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Dude, from the years, I swear to Christ, I wish I had them. I think they burned up. I'll try to find them. I'll try to get, get them from my mom who's moving out here soon because I bet she has them in her cedar chest. From the years 88 to like 93, she gave me a flat top up to like mid ear mullet yep. straight down Kevin. double double polo shirts like light like baby blue and like navy blue double polo Shit. shirts whoa flat top mullet she i'll try to head of the curve on those polo shirts because that was like a fad when i was in high school <laughs> yeah. double polo shirts with double popped collar it wasn't pop collar it was it was you were all business yeah dude they're they're pretty epic um yeah, I'll try to find those. Yeah, that that fucking mullet shit goes hard with the fucking the straight like bowl cut bangs into mullet. I never went that hard with it. I always went flat, flat top. Like it had to come up. But um, believe me, we had goats. I feel like that's how Jim sees when he's like making a new burrito. He's sort of just <laughs> <laughs> fucking zeroed in on that thing, and he's, that sucker, and he's just sort of like floating around the kitchen like an entity, like. <laughs> That's that Fallen vision. Have you ever seen Fallen, Chris? Another what? movie you told me to watch years ago that I haven't seen. No. It's, it's on like my that Plex. Sh- it's that weird shaky kid. So Mothman, you know when like you're going through the eyes of the Mothman, it's like flying around. It's doing this weird shit with the camera. It's like it's kind of like that. That mixed with like Predator vision. So Chapstick. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that part, I watched that movie in the theater stoned at like 15 or 16 whenever that came out 2001 2002 and that part freaked me the fuck out man the indrid cold call when he's in the fucking motel oh full grabbing the front of the shirt oh shit (laughs) moment yes riveting (laughs) you want riveting although i will say a guilty pleasure of mine of seagulls is uh glimmer man (laughs) <laughs> with <laughs> yeah, Keen, Keen and Ivory Wayans, we got them to crack. Yes, Dude, I thought you were having a seizure or you were <laughs> fall out of your chair. That, Somehow, that- I just knew you were going to say that before you said it. It's like of all the Steven Seagal movies, he's going to pick out the shitty one with Keen and Ivory Wayans. Yeah, the audio doesn't do it justice. Like from my my viewfinder was like <laughs> it looked like you ejecto cedo cuzzed out of your computer chair. Like that was and I think you were taking a pull off your vape right at the same time, so you choked a little bit. <laughs> that was like a <laughs> sounds about right. Fully. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Uh fuck. Yeah, I think we really stroked it pretty hard here. I don't know if I have any more waxed it. If you will. Yeah, we've waxed it to empty, I think. The punk goth era. <laughs> My what? Your comedic timing on that one was just like fucking perfect. Yeah, it's like fucking hackers. Our records show that you're dead. I'm what? <laughs> Richard Gill, man. Public enemy number one. Yep, I think uh, we covered them all. <clears throat> How? In the name of Zeus's Uh, yeah i i had planned on only going like a half hour or so but uh i think we're still gonna drop uh, a bonus episode we have we had banked we did basic instinct which was another fun one as well another michael douglas fucking smacker um if you like black rain you like basic no objection what what are your thoughts on basic instinct don't remember it how many just times remember this? once I've only seen it once. I only remember Michael Douglas's sweater while they're at a cathedral. Grave. Yeah, exactly. The V neck, the deepest V neck that anyone's ever seen. In their Do you guys think life. he's probably a raging asshole in real life? Don't work too hard. Shooter yeah. might drive you to drink. Stop riding me, man. I'll kick your fucking teeth hey. in. <laughs> Dude, that's such a fuck. Dude, that scene gets me fucking hyped every. Um, I don't know. 
I go 50 50 on Michael because I mean, he's he a also fucking did... asshole in every movie he's ever been in. So, yeah, but I, kn- I know people that have that kind of gruff exterior and the, the sweetest fucking people you've ever, ever met in your life kind of thing, too. So, who knows? I mean, he's got fucking throat cancer from eating box. So, <laughs> uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. <laughs> Chris, she have you seen uh, Ghost in the Darkness? I actually just watched that a few weeks ago. Yeah. What do you think? It's very... Uh, Don't. No, I liked it, but it was a very you guys <sighs> movie. Yes, it was. I think that's one of those ones because I don't, I don't want to blaspheme Ghost in the Darkness now. So hear me out. I watched it. So 96, 97, Tread I was 12 or 13. Lightly. It was the... It was the baddest fucking thing I thought I had ever seen. I watched it later in life and I was like, there's a couple things I would have liked done differently. Like it didn't, I didn't get the same fucking spark as when I was 12 or 13 when I watched it. I'll say, I'll just leave it at that, but it is a good movie. Great film. Yeah, Um, it's a good one. No problem at all. When I watched it later in life, it, it, it's like when you're a kid, you remember things a certain way. And when you get older, you realize that, like some of that was a facade. It was it was kind of that scenario. Like I watched it again. And I was like, Why did I jock this so hard? You know, kind of thing. But um, yeah, I could go fifty fit, dude. I this is a movie I would never watch normally. But have you ever seen Behind the Candelabra with Matt Damon and Michael Douglas about uh fucking? I'd watch the shit out of that. I dude, haven't what is, yet. What is this Liberace? Thing? Liberace, dude. It is it is like the epitome of something I would avoid, but it is great. I implore anyone to fucking just put all put everything aside and just watch it. Any predetermined note and just watch it. It's a good fucking film. Uh and it's like really funny, maybe inadvertently or not, but there's there's some really funny kind of poignant moments, but I like it too because that's a movie that HBO's kind of took a chance on. It was like an HBO direct movie. You couldn't release that in theaters and like turn a pro- like it's like it seemed kind of like a passion project kind of thing. And I I just think it's really good. It's kind of kooky. Uh, it's a lot of fun. If you're a fan of Eastbound and Down, Matt Damon gets his face changed similarly to Stevie, like later on in the series where he's got this crazy so fucking, fucking jaw. And like, dude. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that movie, but I know a little bit about Liberace and like his longtime partner started getting plastic surgery to look like him. Yeah. So that he could do it fuck gets- himself. <laughs> It's like fucking, that's so fucking weird. It gets so bonkers, <laughs> but it's funny how how much Michael Douglas and Matt Damon buy in to what they're doing. It's just it's good. It's good shit. Check it out. Behind the Candelabra, I think it's called on HBO. Strong wreck. Um Baseball. That's been baseball. Uh I don't I don't have anything else to add. Uh we're other than we're also simulcasting or we're simultaneously releasing we'll release this and our uh banked episode on basic instinct so if you've never seen basic basic instinct check it out uh it's worth knowing what the leg crossing scene is about and all that like for for younger folks who who probably (laughs) didn't grow up with that um check that out it's fucking rad i think to me i think of like a trifecta of like basic instinct like jade and like Diabolique or maybe there's another kind of movie that you could fit in there that all uh, like early to mid nineties kind of like femme fatale action police procedural kind of thing that are really cool. I'm a big fan of Jade. Just think, just be like David Caruso in Jade. You'll understand that (laughs) reference in 40 year old virgin. If you then go watch Jade from 1995 with Linda Fiorentino and David Caruso, uh, that's a banger too. If you like basic instinct, you like Jade, check it out. Um, next episode next week, we're trying to get Steve's, uh, father onto the show and correct me wherever I fuck it up here, but he previously worked for the secret service. Can I say that? Various fields of law enforcement later became a lawyer. Yep. Okay. And so uh, he has some some stories that he's willing to share. Um, ostensibly, we'll find out. Uh, I'm just as I'm just as curious and 
I'll need to I'll need to cut back on the liquor, I think, and kind of mind my P's and Q's <laughs> when he's on. But yeah, we'll see what that what that's like. Should be fun. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting nothing, dude. Like I don't know what to expect. Like I'm, I'm like it's like uh, Owen Wilson in in um, Armageddon. Like I'm like 95 percent nervous, five percent like excited. Like I don't know what the fuck to expect. Yep, though <laughs> should be a good time. I'm gonna have to mind Steve offline to kind of like where I should a- approach this from. But at any rate. My mind is Liam Neeson crossed with Charles Grodin from Beethoven. So if you can picture that, that's where I'm at right now. Um, and we'll see if we got some some cool stories that he's willing to divulge. Uh, that'll be next week. Chris, thank you for sitting in with us. Just your presence you. has been enlightening, fun, brought depth and flavor to the show as always. Let's fucking go. Appreciate you very much. <laughs> I won't. I was tempted. He almost got me, but I'm not going to do it. Um, <laughs> go, my favorite sports team. Go. You can reach out to us. Still no hate mail. Steve, sorry to disappoint. Uh, you can do so. Leave us hate mail or happy mail, good mail at wax at waxingtheporpoise.com. Either of our socials, Instagram is waxing the porpoise or at waxing the porpoise, rather. Twitter is at waxing the porp. Uh, let us know how we're doing. Give us a shout. Keep the reviews, good vibes coming in. Thank you all for supporting us so far, all the friends of the show. We appreciate you. Looking forward to future collaborations. And, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Any final thoughts from you fellas before we cut this one off here? Nope. Nope. If you know, you know. I hate you. <laughs> there is no truth in it, but it was close enough for government work. <laughs>